you know, we we take the kids, and it was an outing. We had uh, uh, Jack Parham and Hazel Parham, yeah. close friends of ours, and and it was an annual thing. We'd get together with them, and we'd go just start driving out a country road somewhere looking for a tree. Yeah. And when we found one that looked like the one we wanted and nobody was around, <laughs> we snatched us a cedar tree, you know, and bring it home and, and, and decorate it. Right. And it, it was always a lot of fun time and stuff like that. But it was my job to uh, decorate the tree. And I had one of these A-frame uh, vaulted ceilings mm -hmm. at my house when I lived on Archwood. Yeah, I remember it well. And, you know, we'd put about a 14-foot tree in there, and it'd go all the way up to the top. And it's kind of hard to decorate. Yeah. But figured out a way. Most trouble I ever got into in my life with the missus. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you, you have upset the secretary. I have. Oh, I no. Have. You oh, see, no. see, I had beams that would go across the room. Yeah. Well... Josh, Dick, and Ben, we'd take turns. I'd set them up on the beam. Now, these were little kids. Sure. No harnesses, no safety <laughs> nets, no nothing. I just set them up on the beam, and I'd say, here, hang this. And we'd hang the ornaments on the tree off of the beam. <laughs> well, Kath wouldn't get too excited. Yeah. But one year, she decided she had to go to the store and get something. And she said, now, where you going? You and the boys get that tree decorated. Mm. Now, back then, everybody had uh, icicles. Right. Oh, yes. You know, and, and my wife's one of these type people that every icicle had to be laid. Single, single strand of light icicle would have to be laid perfectly on the branch. Yep. Well, that just takes too long. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got the balls on. And... And we had to put the icicles on, and um, it just took entirely too much wrong long to do. And but I had one of my little famous ideas one year, and a uh, year before, we had bought one of these rainbow vacuum cleaners. Oh boy! Now you know the rainbow vacuum cleaner. It's a wonderful vacuum cleaner, but you put water in a canister. Yeah. And, um, you know, it sucks it in and blows it out. Well, it's got a reverse on it. You know, you can turn the hose around and blow rather than suck. Right. Well, I figured out that I could stand on the ground, dangle an icicle in front of the hose when it's blowing, and I can launch that sucker <laughs> up on the tree. Well, it was fun. Now, you imagine me and three little boys, oh, yeah. and they realize that they can shoot missiles, ice, icicle missiles. Yes. Well, what's better than one icicle, but a handful <laughs> of icicles. Oh, Lord. Well, it didn't take long, and we were we were launching those things. The boys, would we'd end up as make a game out of it. It was, it was like skeet. They'd throw an icicle up in the air, and I'd catch it with the hose <laughs> and blow it the rest of the way up there. Oh, well, they wouldn't lay perfectly yeah. on there. They would be kind of wadded up. You know, you just have a blob of sickles. But with enough of them, it looks like you had a lot of... Yeah, it snowed. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So anyway, we're in there in the middle of launching all of this on there. And, and, and we're doing real good. And all of a sudden, we hear the door open. And it was the Secretary of the War Department just come in. Oh, boy. And she saw... Me launching those icicles with the rainbow vacuum cleaner, <laughs> and she went nuts. Well, that was not its intended purpose. Well, yeah, well, yeah but they wasn't uniform. They were oh, just kind of wow. blobbed up. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now to guys, that don't make a difference. But to these Yankee Americans that you know, <laughs> only childs and uh -huh. you know, that people just only child ain't right anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> You've got you've got them up here with all these wads of icicle. I never 
For years, she would tell that story in a despairing way to company. Oh, really? They laughed about it. Well, they should. <laughs> and that made her even madder because no one was agreeing with her that that was not the appropriate way to put icicles on a tree. Yeah. Well, at least you weren't trying to blow her expensive glass balls up there on the tree. With well, it. you know, there's some things you just don't do. <laughs> That's true. That would have been fun, though. But probably would be. I bet I could kind of hover one over the hose right there. It's magic. There it goes. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It'd That's right. funny. That is hilarious. I can right now. I can see those those three little little uh, starlings sitting up on that beam. <laughs> That's right. J- it Josh like would want to. Josh would want to stand up on the beam. Of course. Of course, the beam was about you know it was about ten ten inches wide. Yeah. And uh, that didn't go over well with his mama. I imagine not. But I imagine uh, not. anyway, everybody lived to tell it another year, so it, it's okay. It's all right. All right, we have a text coming in already. Remind everybody, we do have text lines open. We do have a phone line open this morning. Uh, 731-410-7560 is one of the lines, or you can use 731-277-5155. The Old Town Spaghetti Store hotline is available to you. Put you right in the phone bank, and you can talk to John Allen this morning at 731-423-8101. All right, first one out of the hat this morning. Here we go. Good morning, it says. The best into a kid's Christmas is needle and thread and thimble stringing popcorn. Yep. Tree or living room, jabbed fingertip, has no side effects either. Ho, ho, ho. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Santa. Santa's on the text line this morning. Yeah, I can remember doing that, too. I poked myself numerous times. We tried that. Yep. We never could get a long enough strand because boys kept eating the popcorn. I had the same problem, but it wasn't the boys. It was me. Oh, it was you? <laughs> now, Cracker Jacks does real good because, see, just plain old popcorn has a tendency when you run that needle through there, mm-hmm. the the kernels will, you know, well, break. Like, yeah, that's true. But that sticky Cracker Jack stuff, right. it stayed together, and you can string that stuff pretty fast. Now, you could have you fired that stuff up there with your vacuum cleaner. It would have stuck to the walls and everything else. Ah, it's always cracker, next year. Cracker Jacks, man. Yeah, next time. Yeah, got next a time. prize. That's true. I, I that's that's one thing I never think about anymore. You used to have to have it when you went to a ball game or a basketball game, baseball game. Got to have some Cracker Jacks. And the first thing you did was, when if you got them at home, was dump it all out on the kitchen table, see what was in the little package. And it actually had something in there. Yeah. That, so I remember getting a little metal race car one time, mm-hmm. little tiny thing, yep. but it was a. It was a real gift, you know. Yeah, and it was a prize. See, that's, yeah. that's what made it worthwhile, the fact that they told you it was a prize. Do they ha- do that anymore? I guess. I haven't bought Cracker Jacks in years. Well, I, I love haven't them. either. I, I figure it's just a surprise that you got Cracker Jacks in the box. Well, that's true. Yeah. They, 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 or you got a box that's, that's not uh, environmentally right, you know. Well, that's true. You got that. and They probably find something wrong with it, you know, all these <laughs> crazy people out there nowadays yeah well we, we're so overprotected we can't move without hurting ourselves you know which is what they're trying to keep us from doing anyway we don't need to get on that on a saturday morning we need to do something more positive in my in my uh, christmas decorations this year I, I found in my attic far too many things hmm. and so far i haven't been able to talk anybody into helping me dispose of some of those things but i did have too many wreaths that I didn't didn't use on a regular basis. So I said, I'm going to hang one on my fence out on the streets. I live on a corner. Mm-hmm. So you could see the wreath from the corner as you came down the street. The there big street. You go. Yeah. So I took it out there. I had my little my little brass loop, you know, and I put it over the fence. And it looks real nice out there. But I figured out after looking at it for a couple of times, part of the reason that it looks so good is because it's hanging on a relatively new fence that West End Fence Company put up. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yep. I was going to put a nail in there and hang it on the nail. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to mess up that fence. So I got my little hook, shepherd's hook, and put it right across the top, and it looks good. Oh, how about that? And so does the fence still. Do you have lights on it? I'm working on that. I'm working on In fact, I, that, that's one of the things on my on my list. I need uh, I need you to look through your rummage if you're, when you get a chance. I need about a, uh, a four, four-foot piece of uh, one-inch PVC. That you're not going to need back. 
Come out to my truck after the show. I got it right out <laughs> Follow here. Follow me. Yeah. yeah. We'll go to commercial break. I'll go get my dog. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 I, I've got some, uh, I've got some um, 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 LED spotlights that are, uh, what do you call it, solar, solar powered. Mm-hmm. So I, I can take my little mallet and knock that, that uh, four foot thing into the ground about six, eight inches and slide that down in the top of it and it'll be just right. Speaking of <laughs> what? Yeah, go ahead. No, no. I, you what? You, I, you had that look. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to oh, spoil man. that look. Uh, you know, the, the, this is this is my, uh, and I just can't get over it. My uh, lights and my disappointment with with what we have come to. You know, <laughs> you know. Growing up, well, my daddy was a he. he other than just being a, a magnificent man, he was scared to death of Christmas lights. He because was, of what could happen. Yeah, yeah. He, he just knew that if that single strand with the big bulbs on it that we had growing up, if you walked out of the room, it was going to catch the tree on fire. <laughs> yeah. He just he was convinced of it. And we could only leave the Christmas lights on when we were in the room with the lights. It's still that way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, and I understand and respect that. But as 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 time goes on and you and you get uh, lights yourself, you do things a little differently. Sure. Let's well, let's take a phone call this morning. All right, let's do that. Let me get this fired up over here. Caller, good morning. You're on with John Allen. How you doing? Great. Good. How about you? Good. Hey, John, I'm getting 126 volts on my wall outlets. What's the problem? Well, um, not. Ne- I don't know necessarily that you have a problem, good. but. Could it be the ground? Well, that's what I was fixing to tell you. Now, if it got on up to about 135 or 140, you may have a grounding problem. But here's what you want to check. Uh, Have you got a 220 in the house? Oh, yeah. All right. Get your meter out and plug your leads into the 220 and go from hot to ground on on one side. And then go from hot to ground on the other side and see what the difference in the voltage is, if there is any. I'm getting about the same on each one. It's like 126. Well, that's not bad. You know, I would not worry about it. I would not be really concerned about uh, a grounding problem. Now, I have run into houses where it's been anywhere from 140 to 200 uh, on one leg. And that's where you, you do have a grounding problem, and most of the time it's out at the pole, not in your house. Right. That's what I was thinking it could be at the transformer, too. Yeah. Uh, birds and squirrels and little critters get up there and, and get their nest up there. They, they cause a problem sometimes. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I've had to do is I had to get, I had to get some 130-volt bulbs. Well, those are the good bulbs anyway. Those are the ones that will last the longest. Yeah, because if you flip them other ones on, they're rated at 120, you'll blow them. That's exactly right. That's uh, They call those bulbs that are rated for 130, 135, they call those rough service bulbs now. That is, if you can find them. And, uh, I found them at the Dollar Tree. There you go. Well, all right. Well, if you can get one that's stamped 130 volts on the bottom of it, those are the good ones. Yep. Okay, thank you, John. All right, thanks for calling. Appreciate the call. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You were talking about uh, having to turn the Christmas tree lights off when you left the room. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and then when when things started changing and you had these little teeny lights mm-hmm. that everybody puts up now. Right. Well, of course, you're not doing it this year because you can't find them. They're somewhere out in a boat somewhere in the sure. middle of the I ocean. I haven't had to buy any this year. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize that. Well, see... You know, uh, I, I I got my tree up at my house outside now, yeah. and and uh, it's something I just kind of do every year, and 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 it's a blue tree with a white cross at the top of it. Yeah, kind of stands out in the darkness and Boy, does a, it attract ever. attract the deer to come around. You know, <laughs> so you know we do that, but but as the season will go on, due to uh, stupid people. My blue lights will start to turn white. Now, this is just wrong. I still can't get over this. <laughs> you go out and you buy lights 
different colors. You can get red lights and blue lights and purple lights and uh, green lights and all of that. Yeah. And they're they're cheap. They, yeah. yeah. Well, it's still money, but it's cheap. You right. know, three, four dollars sometimes for a strand of them. And then it rains. And all of a sudden, your colored lights are white. Well, that little tree that's in my front yard's got close to 84 strands of lights on it. And, um, you know, it makes the, the, the electric meter spin and I create a breeze. Does. That's what that hum in the middle of that's, the night that's is. That's what it is. <laughs> that's not the aircraft going over. That's my electric <laughs> meter running. Uh, it's, uh, it, these things are made in... China, mm-hmm. Singapore, Taiwan, I don't know, yeah. one of them far off crazy people countries, you know, and yeah. and they just paint them. It's not colored glass on those bulbs. It's paint. And when they get wet, they wash off. Now, they're rated for outdoor use, but the paint comes off the bulbs. Well, see, they're still within their, uh, their warranty because the, you're still using them. It doesn't say they're not going to change colors. I guess so, but if I wanted assorted colors, yep. I'd get assorted colors. I don't want yeah, my blue ones turning white. I but understand. you know that that that's just something I think so wrong. Of course, it's getting to where you can't hardly buy those anyway. Everything's going to LED. Oh yeah, and I guess they're okay because it's still a colored glass, but it's like they paint. That's the coloring is in the glass itself. Yeah. And when those diodes get to flicker a little bit and get all excited, make the light and. Uh, it it's better because it's there's no heat involved. So you it you don't have to worry about the tree catching fire. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about that, and you also don't have to worry about it melting the color off of the lenses. Yeah, and yeah. the rain washing them off. You know, so I guess we'll have to all eventually go LED. Well, you know, everything I think everything I've got's LED now. But one thing I didn't like, I especially on a on a Christmas tree if it's in the house. You know, I like that old timey glow that an incandescent bulb gave off with a little bit of a tint of yellow in it. You know what I'm saying? And then you, you get, you go out and buy, you buy you a couple of strings of lights because some of your, your incandescents have gone out and you wind up with LEDs and you got half yellow and half bright white. Mm -hmm. So we had to buy a new tree. I bought it after, after the season last year, the other one went to the curb and I got this first time I've, I've used it. And I had forgotten that I ordered a, a uh, you had choice of what kind of lights you wanted on it. They're all uh, one color, all white, but these are called candlelight. And they've candlelight. got candlelight. Candlelight. They've got a, a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. How about that? And not the bright, bright white. You know, with, with how many ever lights they put on a seven and a half foot tree nowadays, you get those bright lights, man. You got to have sunglasses in the house to That's see where you're going. That's about the truth, yeah. But these these are nice. I mean, they just, it's, 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 it's a cool look. And I had forgotten that I was smart enough to do that. Now, this, this is the tree that, that, that last year did just part of it come and it was tore up. Yeah. And I had to wait for the rest of it to get yeah, in. Yeah, apparently they had they had shipped my tree airmail mm-hmm. and they flew over the house and pushed it out when they <laughs> when they got in the air. Box looked like it had been through World War II. So I never I never opened it because part of the guts that was in the box were hanging out. So I just called the tree manufacturer and I said, hey, we got a problem. And I sent them some pictures. And they sent me two little stickers, and they said, stick these on there and put them back on the porch. UPS will come and get them, mm. and we'll send you a new one. And they did. They took care of it quickly. That's good. Yeah, that, was, that good. was nice. That was nice. I mentioned uh, West End Fence Company, one of our three sponsors. Uh, yes, I do have a West End Fence fence, and uh, very, very happy with the job that they did out there. Mine is a six-foot stockade-style wood fence. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, that's what was there. The other one had gotten old. They came out and replaced it, said, yeah, we need to do this. We can leave this alone. You know, they're not going to replace a bunch of stuff if you call them, if it doesn't need to be replaced. They're not going to spend your money unless they have to. Mm-hmm. And that I like also. Yeah. But they do all kinds of other fencing that you've had more more experience with than I have. Well, they do. They, they put up wrought iron fencing. They put up chain link fencing. Uh, like you said, the wood fencing. And uh, just about any kind of fencing you can think of, they can do it. They can put it up well, put it up straight. I mean, you know, it. it you see some of these fences that just, it just droops. Yeah. That's the only way to say it. Yep. 
And and you you have some companies that'll put up these fences that are pre-made. Oh, those panels. The panels yeah. that have the staples in it, mm-hmm. and then the first time it rains mm-hmm. and the sun pops out, they warp them jump off the the rail there because yeah, the wood's only about an eighth of an inch thick and it looks like so. that's right and uh your your fasteners all rust because they wasn't galvanized and they don't use any of that stuff they uh they build it from scratch and yep. uh set your post in the ground and they'll run your rails then they'll put your fencing up yeah and it does pretty good and uh you know what i like about their wood fences especially this time of the year you can go in there, and, and like I was fixing to tell you with the, your wreaths putting on there, yeah. if you want to light them, there is nothing more tacky than <laughs> to see extension cords draped around under your wreaths. Yes, that's true. And uh, on the outside. So in your case, what you could do is go <clears throat> get you a little one-inch spade bit for your drill. Uh-huh. Drill you a hole where the plug-in on your wreath can just stick through there and put your extension cord on the back side of the fence. Now Now, look at there at you. And then, and then when you get done, of course you'll say, well, now I got a hole in my fence. Yeah. No, you go get you a cork stopper (laughs) and just stick it in the hole. A one inch stopper. A one inch stopper. Yeah. And then, it's plugged up. You don't have anybody peeping in there and looking at your bullfrog during the year when you don't want them to. <laughs> so, That's a good idea. And, and then you can pop your cork out. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and that know, just gives popping a cork a whole new meaning this time does. of the year. It certainly does. You know, we're talking about holes in the fence. My, my old fence had holes in it on purpose mm-hmm. so that my hose, my garden hose, can run without having to throw it over the top of the fence. Mm-hmm. And when West End was through, you know, they put those holes back. I just, it's amazing hey, they, they did. that they even noticed that. Yeah, it is. It is. They did a great job for me, and they'll do that for you. 20, uh, 2158 Hollywood Drive is their location, just a little bit south of I-40 out there. You can call them at 731-668-5959, or for sales, call uh, or email Ricky Pennington, rpennington1 at yahoo.com. You're listening to the John Allen Show, Tricks of the Trade, here on 101.5 on a gloomy-looking Saturday morning. Text lines open, 731-410-7560, or, excuse me, 731-277-5155. Don't forget the phone line, the Old Town Spaghetti Store hotline, 731-423-8101. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more. Need to hear from you this morning. We are Lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are Lions. You can be too. Visit WeServe.org.
Hey Tennessee, I'm Kix Brooks. You know, I've been blessed to tour this nation from sea to shining sea. And every time that bus rolls back across the state line, I'm reminded how good we have it here in our home state. Whether you like to hunt, fish, or watch wildlife, we got our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to thank for it. But before you follow that red dirt road to your favorite fishing hole or hunting spot, there's one thing you need, a license. Just visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com and you can get your license in minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah, one oh, yeah, one oh one five, right? There. Here we go. You know, it's funny how I remember that number, and I can't remember where I was <laughs> ten minutes ago. Uh, Last I looked, you was right over there. Well, sometimes I am, you know. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, sometimes. Oh, oh, look at there. You have jogged somebody's uh, somebody's phone line loose. Let's see what we got here. Uh, good morning, Carly. You're with John Allen. Okay. Good morning. I've got a strange electrical question. Okay. If there are such a thing, um, I'm renting a house. It's a fairly new house, okay? And I was ironing in one of the bedrooms that blew the breaker. So I threw it back. That was fine. Moved to another bedroom, blew the breaker. Then, as it happened, I moved to another room to iron, and it did not blow the breaker. So for an entirely different reason, there was an electrician here one day that had wired the house. And I asked him, and he said, different rooms are wired differently. So what, what does that mean? You said that he said what now? Different rooms are wired for different voltage. Well, that is incorrect. Um, on 110 residential circuits, they're all, you know, 120 volts. But now what your situation may be is that it be controlled by a different type of breaker. So that's why it blows. Yeah, it, it, un, unfortunately, we have overprotected ourselves and for whatever reasons we are required on new houses now to put in instead of just having a standard breaker on many circuits you have to have gfci breakers or arc fault breakers okay and how old is your house you know, I'm not really sure. I want to say maybe five years, maybe older than that, maybe between five and ten. Okay. Well, I would almost bet you that you you are plugged into either an arc fault breaker or maybe it's a 15-amp breaker and not a 20-amp breaker. You know, an electric iron will pull about, you know, eight, nine amps, and if there are other things pull or, or tied into that circuit... It may be actually doing what it's supposed to do. And well, that's true, yeah, because it did. But see, I had been ironing in there for months on end. Yeah. And then all of a sudden one day, somebody walked in the room and turned the light on and blew it. Yeah. You know, normally your lights and your receptacles are on different circuits so that one's not controlled by the other. Ah. But in, in your case, you may just, with that iron, it exceeded the rating on the breaker. And uh, if by chance they had wired it with a 20-gauge wire, a number 12 wire, that would handle 20 amps, you might could upgrade your breaker a little bit to where you wouldn't have that nuisance tripping. But uh, I'd have to see the wire gauge in order to tell you sure. if that's possible. But I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, well, I moved out of there. I just took the iron, you know. I'm kind of a kind of a archaic anyway, because most people don't iron anymore, but I do. And so I just moved it to another room, and it was fine in there. Sure. And that's when he said, well, you'll be fine in here because it's wired differently, and it can handle the iron. Why? Right. It, it's probably on a 20-amp breaker in there instead of a 15 wherever you were. Right. Or, or it could right. be the difference in the breakers. But uh, as long as it's tripping, it's doing what it's wanting to do. I'd be that's more... True. That's what you said earlier. We are now an overprotected society. Well, that's true. You got you know, that you right. The things that we did when we were children that now, you know, you can't have a string in your jacket anymore because you might hang yourself and uh, yep. things like that, you know, that we, we just did. We ran around. We climbed in trees. We fell out of trees. And did You're supposed that. to. That's how you learn to climb. <laughs> Apparently it is. It's how you learn not to climb sometimes. That's true. You learn not, how not to fall, too. Uh, That's true. And, well, I grew up in a blacksmith and machine shop. So oh, I boy. I was dangerous really quickly. My dad <laughs> ran one for 55 years. Yeah. Wow. 
So, yeah, up in Illinois. Well, that's all right, then. Well, you know, sometimes you just got to slip off the grid and go back to the old way of doing things. I do that many times, including the iron, I guess. So. That's true. Yeah, you don't see that very often anymore. No, that's very true. People want to iron, so. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Appreciate the call. Interesting call. Yeah. yeah for sure. Uh, one of our other sponsors that uh, we have three great sponsors that keep us keep us going, keep us uh, on the air, and uh, one of those is uh, Economy Siding and Windows. Now, don't let the name fool you because they do more than that. Yeah, they'll they'll do a little bit of everything, but the thing you wanna you wanna do is uh, is let them make your house maintenance free. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all about. Yeah, you know, nobody likes to paint. The house, the siding on the house, the overhangs, the shutters and all that stuff. Let them come out and put you some nice siding on and then wrap those face of boards uh, where the gutters always get some, uh, your gutters get to leaking and they'll rot those boards out. Put you some nice face of material up there and then get you some continuous gutters. And then while you're at it, get some nice gutter guards to put up there. Yes. And the windows, oh my goodness. Now, I've been in houses where, you know, you're inside and the window's closed and the drapes are still flying oh, yes. because it's, it's oh, leaking, yeah. you know. And, and, and I've been into some also that had some cracks around them big enough you could throw a good-sized cat through them. Mm-hmm. But these are the, the, the good kind of windows. They're energy efficient. They got all of the efficiency ratings that the – building department starts looking at now Mm -hmm. and boy do i have stories for that (laughs) um uh that you know it's you know you have to buy a different window in this town now if you lived on the south side of jackson Mm -hmm. down towards henderson right it's a different kind of window than you'd put on the north side of jackson are you serious? I am dead serious. There, well, yeah, you know there is a lot of a lot of climate change between here and Pennsylvania. Th- that's right. You know, <laughs> give me a break. I am dead. Ser- they have these little maps now that these uh, w- <laughs> that that they have to go by different temperate zones. Oh Lord! And and don't you dare! I kid you not. Don't you dare put in a new window and tear the sticker off of it. Until the building until department looks it. at it. Yep. Because, true story, I kid you not, Stormy put a window up for me. Mm-hmm. And he took the stickers off and cleaned the window like you ought to do. Right. Here comes the guy from the building department. Where's your sticker? Well, I guess we took it off. Well, I don't know if that's the right kind of window. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> well, how do I know that? Because we told you it was. That's the window that we bought and put in there. So you go out and you take a picture of of a window just like it in the store. It's uh-huh. got the sticker on it. Right. Well, this is the window we put in. Well, how do I know it? It it's the one you put in. Because it's your job to it's, know it. <laughs> I, I I'm not making this stuff up. I mean, I know they, you're not. That's what scares me. They, we, it, it's gotten crazy out there. But anyway, they know the right windows to put in. And they got windows for the north side of town and windows for the south side of town. I've never heard anything that so is one hundred percent true. And it and it's based on a temperate. A it, temperature. It's a coefficient. Yeah. Uh, rating and and all this stuff. So like, if you go out to let's just say, Lowe's and buy a window to put in a new house you're building. Yeah. You better look at the stickers and make sure that they are compatible with your climate zone. <laughs> Have mercy. Oh, give me a Well, break. Stormy can help you with that, though, because he knows. Well, he can do He does yeah. now. He learned the hard way because yeah, he, well. he pulled a sticker off. Yep. Like you're supposed to. Normal people would do that when they finish a job. But you're probably, the, you're probably the same guy that tears the little tags off your pillows, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Oh. Under un- penalty of law. That's right. <laughs> and the mattress. <laughs> And the cushions that go on your sofa, yeah, oh, I'm that guy. <laughs> we, better, we better hush that. Go send a, a thought is down here on us. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have them at my house when I go home. <laughs> That's true. Stormy is a man. He can make your house, as John said, pretty much uh, maintenance-free from siding to windows to gutters to leaf guards, you name it. They can take care of business for you. 731-422-3828 or economysidingadopt.com. 
a calm. Mm. You know, we need to probably talk about something we're supposed to talk about this morning. Out in the way well, of home not. improvement. Yeah. yeah, no, let's do that. You know, uh, things are about to, you, you talked about it's a gloomy day out there right now. Mm-hmm. And it is. But things are fixed to get exciting next week in, in downtown Jackson. Yes, they are. Uh, Monday is our Christmas parade. Mm-hmm. Might be a little soggy. I don't know. But, I'm hoping it'll get out of here before then. Well, maybe it will, you know. But, uh, you know, it. Uh, we'd hate for, well, I'm not even going to go there. I've made enough fun of these folks. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to have the Christmas parade. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had to, we got a new tenant downtown. And I had to warn them last night. I said, uh, you know, you fixed to have an, an extra overflow of pedestrian traffic. And, uh car traffic come Monday, so you might want to make sure they don't get all your parking spaces. Right. And uh, that's my good vi- people down here at Doe's Restaurant Yeah, that just opened yeah. up, and, and they've, they've had some real good crowds since they've been here, And but uh, they're going to get to experience our Christmas parade Monday night firsthand because it's going to go right, right in door. front yeah. of them at the old uh, Greyhound bus station downtown. So, you know, Santa's going to be coming next week. Going to be in the house. The lights are up. City's got the downtown looking really good. And uh, all those lights will be coming on. So we are officially fixing to get into the season and get this ball rolling down here. And then old Santa's going to take residence up starting Thursday. He'll be down here Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night from 6 to 8 or until the young'uns are gone. Yep. And then at uh, noon to 2 on Saturday. Ooh. And we're going to do that up until, uh, well, we're going to have to, the way the calendar falls, we're going to slip an extra couple of days in there before Christmas. Since Christmas is on a Saturday, a Saturday mm-hmm. Christmas Eve is Friday, and he's got to head back to the whole North Pole. So we're going to slip in a Wednesday and a Thursday right before Christmas. Okay. So and the 20, uh, 22nd and 23rd. Yes, yeah. and, and uh, we got to do that because... Uh, you know, there's some of them little youngins that, that didn't feel like they were treated right last year because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they're all going to gang up on Santa this year and, <laughs> and jump up on his lap. There you go. And uh, that's going to happen. We're not going to do the social distancing stuff this year. Well, you know, I think Santa would be, uh, he, you know, as much, as much facial hair as Santa's got, it's, that's a pretty good filter. In fact, that's better than most masks. It, it is. It it's, uh, won't be any masks there. It won't be any shields there. <laughs> and uh, just bring on the young'uns, and, and we'll have our uh, instant fil- uh, Santa filtration system in place, which we're just going to turn on the fan and blow it out the back window. There you go. <laughs> and, and do it that way. So No doubt. So we'll no, be all right. No doubt about it. It's John Allen's Tricks of the Trades on the, this Saturday morning in uh, Jackson. we got to take another quick commercial break, and we'll be back. Phone line is open, 423-8101 with a 731 out front. Text lines, 277-5155 or 410-7560. Don't forget that 731. They tell us we got to have it now. talked to my doctor and he said he would highly recommend that I go ahead and get a shot. It doesn't only help me, it helps my family around me and all the people I associate with. So you're not only helping yourself, you're helping your neighbors also. Well, you know, I might have been a little bit hesitant to begin with, but after uh, looking at all the statistics and I don't see any uh, anything after you take the shot, everybody seems to get along with it pretty good. So you have a spot, take your shot. We are going to be making the most classic bourbon cocktail known to man, the mint julep. Became the official cocktail of the Kentucky Derby in 1938. This cocktail is the Gold Rush. Today we'll be using bourbon instead. Today we're going to make an old-fashioned cocktail, one of the most classic bourbon cocktails there are. And it tastes good for breakfast. With the Kentucky meal, we are going to swap out that vodka for Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Called the Boulevardier, and we beef up the bourbon because it's Kentucky, and that's what we do here. Now to do a modern twist. Sometimes it's hard to do a variation on a classic cocktail because a lot of them are so good. An obvious place to go from there for a variation is a bourbon shake. So now we're going to take that Kentucky sour and put a very fun, modern edge on it. 
but if you are the adventurous type, it is a delicious drink. And that is what I call a bittersweet bourbon sour. Cheers. In your home, this time of year is your rocking chair. What? Yeah, your rocking chair. Okay. So here's here's the, here's the deal. You've, you've gone to all this trouble of putting up all your Christmas decorations, and you got cords running everywhere, and and uh, even run cords where you're not supposed to run, like under rugs and stuff like that. Don't ever want to do that. But, right. But when you're running extension cords, one of them cords will always creep up under your rocking chair somehow. And you know the the the, the back and forth action of a rocking chair. Uh -huh. That extension cord will creep up there between the wood and you'll rear back one night and something will go pop and it's where you've cut your extension cord uh -oh. and done. Now that happened at my house last night of all places. Not that it was going to my Christmas lights, but uh, secretary of the war department says, I'm not getting warm right now. <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? Well, she curls up in an electric blanket in uh -huh. her chair, right? Now she's in an electric blanket in the dead of summer. But last night, she had to put her electric blanket on. It wouldn't come on, so I had to get up. I was perfectly seated and comfortable in my own little chair. Right. And I had to get up and flip everything upside down, turn it over, tracing cords down. And she done cut the cord to her electric blanket right oh, into no. with the rocking chair. Is it safe to take uh, that situation right there, to get your little pen knife out of your pocket and strip that wire down and twist it? and put some tape on it and let her rock and roll. Is that safe? Well, it's acceptable. Okay. That's, that's, that's our redneck solution. And sure. Duct tape fix everything. Of course. But uh, it's better on some of these twisted braided wires to use the actual crimp connectors on them to where you can get a better connection because tape and braided wire don't go together. Okay. Uh, you'll twist a connection together and used to, everybody used electric tape, especially if you had the old knob and tube wire. Mm -hmm. But the goo on the tape gets down in, into the wire and it builds up. You, you start not getting a good connection. Huh. And heat builds up and then you have a real problem. So I tell everybody, always use wire nuts instead of tape. And you can twist your wires together and then put the appropriate size wire nut on it. And, and that way you got a good connection. Uh, as cheap as everything is now, rather than trying to patch some of these cords, because that is a very good source of fire, um, just throw it away and get you another one. Yep. Extension cords are another culprit this time of year because people will undersize their extension cords. You know, you'll have four or five six extension cord running out in the backyard to light up one of your little Santa displays. Right. And a lot of times I'll find when I go out on a call, it's those little bitty interior lamp cords that are about 10, 15 foot long and you just start plugging them together. Oh no. And then you'll lay them in, on the ground and that starts popping your little GFCI uh, outlets that are on the, uh, the back side of the house. And you can't get them reset, so get you a good extension cord. Let's take a phone call this okay, morning. Let's do that. Let me remind everybody we are streaming this morning on Facebook on uh, WNWS 101.5. Uh, just go to that Facebook page, and you can see us right now. And the show will be archived on y'all.com. Leave the apostrophe out, Y-A-L-L.com. It'll be archived at a later time, and you can go back and see it most any time you want to. Forgot to do that early, and uh, uh, John reminded me. The other John reminded me. John oh. Rawl. All right, let's go to the phone now. Caller, you are on with John Allen. Good morning. Hello, calling you back again. All right. Doing good. All right. One of the best ways that I've found to repair electrical wires, John's right about using a, a crimp on it to connect them, but also you can use a shrink tube over that, and you got a pretty good repair right there. You're yeah, exactly right. Good, good use of the hair dryer, <laughs> even for bald headed people. And that makes it really a permanent repair instead of using tape and stuff like that. 
That's a good thing. I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people don't realize that, but uh, you're exactly right. Yep, drink tubes. All right. All right. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it, caller. We've got a whole bank of calls here. Let me get that one out of the uh, out of the mix and go here. Caller, you're on with John Allen. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, I want to throw a couple of things at you. Uh, before you run out of time, could you have somebody text in and and tell us what a, a dozen of hot tamales go for? I, I'm sorry, caller, but I'm having a hard time understanding you. Uh, Okay, can you hear me now? That, that's a little better. Just uh, uh, back was, up just a little bit. I was wondering how much does a dozen of hot tamales go for? A dozen hot tamales. I think he's talking about maybe doughs. Oh, yeah. you know, I haven't memorized, I should, but I hadn't memorized the menu yet. I don't know what they're charging for those, but I do know one thing. They're good. I had them... Oh, I actually had a batch of them before they opened up just to test them out. <laughs> and uh, and get get the ones, get them with chili on top of them. And uh, they are really going uh, really good, and they're great appetizers when you go to the restaurant. Best steak you ever put in your mouth. Okay, uh, one more thing. Before you go off the air, could you uh, talk about surge protectors? Surge protection? Yeah. yeah right, right. Right, well... Surge protectors are, are really good, but in this part of the, the country, or I say in the city limits, they are not as required as you might have in rural areas. We really, on, on Jackson Energy Authority and a lot of the local southwest uh, uh, area out there, we just don't have the trouble with surges like you have in other parts of the state. Uh, we're pretty well regulated and things are, are pretty well protected. But if you're going to have a surge protector in there for your electronics, if you go out and buy and don't, don't uh, skimp on the money on these, get a good surge protector that has a little reset button on the side of it, and you'll be able to put your sensitive electronics in that and plug it in to make sure, and this it won't work unless you do this. Make sure that the receptacle that you're plugging your surge protector in is a grounded receptacle. And uh, in other words, it's got that third wire uh, in the box, the hot, the ground, and the neutral. And uh, that way you'll pretty well protect everything. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, on the surge protector, how many plug-ins... It's susceptible. It's from overloading it. From overloading it. Well, that's based on amperage, not necessarily voltage. But normally, about five or six plug-ins on those protectors is about all they're going to make them for, and that's a good uh, uh, a good average right there. It's all based on the load. So, you know, literally, you could have one thing on a circuit, and it'll it'll max it out, or you could have 10 or 15 things on a circuit before you max it out, but you just have to add up the amperage of what you're plugging in not, so that you're at about 80% of what it's rated for. So in other words, if you've got like a 10 amp surge protector, you don't want to exceed seven and a half or eight amps. Okay. All right. All right, and look here, I'm gonna try one. <laughs> yeah, let us know how it goes. All right, then. All right, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you, caller. Appreciate Bye -bye. that. John, we've got another one hanging here. In fact, it's uh, box is full over here. Caller, you're on with John Allen this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I got a friend. He's getting ready for the next tire failure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> his uh, his uh, 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 generators. He's built him a suicide cord. Going to plug it in. Uh oh. Uh, what would you be? He knows to disconnect the main when he plugs it in, but he's got a, he's got it built to two twenty. Can he just plug this into a two twenty outlet? Will that make his whole house two twenty, or will that split that when it goes to the box? Well, what you're considering is very dangerous. Uh, that. That's why they called it suicide. That's right. You know, that main breaker has got to be off. 
but you it's really a for workers, right? I, I've got you, you've got to have uh, you really need to have a, a, a switch made for this situation that will let you know when the other line is uh, uh, energized but more importantly the thing you're risking out there and this is really important let's say you put a generator in on your house with this so-called suicide cord not only are you putting yourself in danger, you are putting a lineman uh, out there that might be working up the street on the pole. You're putting him in danger because you're energizing a dead line. Well, that's why you cut the main breaker, right? That That's one of the many reasons you do that. But uh, you're not going to know when the power comes back on until you physically disconnect them. Uh so just be careful. I, I, I mean, I know how to do, and I have done what you're talking about. But unless yeah. you have a general knowledge of electricity, and and take safety precautions in that, I would not recommend that at all. Okay, I I, I understand why. Yeah, you know, I, I get you, drift. I understand why, and I understand why you can't tell me. I, I get you. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, caller. Appreciate that. I uh, got a text. All right, what we got? This is a unique question. I don't think we've ever had this question before. Oh, good. It says, do people still put lightning rods on houses? Do we need to? Will it help with all the electronics we have now? Well, it's not going to help with your electronics. Uh, rather than lightning rods, they put what's called lightning arresters. Now, the lightning rod is good to supposedly divert a bolt of lightning uh, off away from your electrical circuit, but it won't. Now, lightning arresters will actually interrupt the circuit out where your meter is and keep it from coming in the house, so they say. However, I will say this. With all of the so-called technology that you have out there to protect you against lightning, if you get a direct hit on lightning, they ain't nothing going to save you. I mean, that's some powerful stuff right there, and you're still probably going to have some damage. Okay. Take we another got, call yeah, right we got there. another couple of calls here. Callers, uh, caller, you're on with John Allen, and we're getting close on time, so make it a quick one, please. All right, I appreciate it. Yeah, I got the tail end of that guy talking about the generator. Yep. I always thought I was safe. I got a 5250-watt generator. If I plugged it into my 220 Bolt outlet. I realize I can't power up the whole house, but I can run my lights and refrigerator. Right. If I shut my main off. Yep. Am I not? Am I not safe from hurting alignment? You are safe. Okay. Well, I'm gonna hang up and let the next guy call. It. All, right, All right. Thank good. you, call. Appreciate that. Appreciate the uh, the kindness for the next guy. And you are the next guy. You're on with John Allen. I'll make it quick. Uh, I, I've got a. You know, I'm growing up here in the south. That we've all, I've always called those big boxes hooked up to duct work outside of the house called central heat and air units. Right. Well, I've got one that's giving me some issues. And when I go online, everything's called a furnace or something else. And, and it seems like that I'm all, all the information is directed to everything above the Mason-Dixon line. Help me out. It's my unit that both pumps cool and warm air outside is that does it have a fur it's gas operated but is that considered a furnace and an air conditioner uh, a conditioner or is it a central heating unit an hvac what is that yes it is you are right it's a gas furnace with a cent with an air conditioner in it and it blows through a forced air system and uh, that's why it's called a central heating and air. Everything is in one spot. Okay, great. Uh, it blows great and cool, uh, but um, I can hear the burner or the burner come on, but the blower and then the, the thermostat clicks twice when I turn the heat on, and then it will uh, it will not blow. If it does blow, it'll blow for about fifteen seconds and shut off. So I know it's the wits end of the show, and you can't get into all that, but. Uh, Anyway, I was just doing some online looking up and, and furnished this, furnished that, and always showed inside the home. Thanks, John Allen. For All right. Thanks a lot. 
Well, folks, we appreciate the calls this morning, and I um, think we're getting a little close on time. Yeah, you should be hearing band music any moment now. I just heard it, yeah. Strike up there the band, is. there we are. Uh, this texter said that's also known as a package unit. That's exactly right, yep. it's a package unit. Yep, absolutely. And there, we had one other text that, John, I'm going to give to you off the air, um, because we don't really need to handle this on the air. Uh-oh. So we'll take care of it. Texter, well, we got you covered, so we just... Hang in there. Appreciate uh, appreciate the text. We got to go. All right. I'm going to get out of here and get some decorating done. So we'll see you next Saturday morning at 8 o'clock for Tricks you of the Trade. You got it. Uh, Jimmy Leach, the investigator, coming up next.